In this regard, her long service, uh, public service, and particular leadership in this time of important change in Puerto Rico. Recently, uh, Mr. Speaker, I had the ob opportunity to take an all-too-quick trip to uh, San Juan to assess the current economic conditions on the island, too brief in that it was less than a day, which seems completely unfair to any visitor to uh, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. But I want to thank my host, our distinguished delegate from the Commonwealth, Jennifer Gonzalez, for hosting me on that visit. I thank her for her co-sponsorship on this bill, her leadership on the island here in Congress, and we're grateful to have you as a new member of this body, and I yield to uh, the delegate from Puerto Rico such time as she may consent. The gentlelady from Puerto Rico is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise in support of the U.S. Territories Investor Protection Act, and thank you, my friend, French Hill, for having me here. I am a co-sponsor of this bill, and I thank Representative Velasquez for introducing H.R. 1366 and the members who have joined in supporting this important legislation. The U.S. Territories Investor Protection Act will close a loophole in the current law. By passing this bill, Congress will bring to Puerto Rico's investors the same protections enjoyed by investors residing in the 50 states. Under current law, investment funds that are located and organized in the U.S. territories and sell to only residents of the territories are exempted from the Investment Company Act of 1940s, which governs entities such as mutual and exchange trade funds. Because of these exemptions, investment companies located in the U.S. territories can sell their products to territory residents while not being subjected to the oversight, disclosure, and conflict of interest requirements that govern investment companies located in the states. As a result, investors residing in Puerto Rico and the other territories have experienced investment losses, some of which likely will have been prohibited had the 1940 Act applied to the territories. <coughs> For example, UBS operating in Puerto Rico serve as an advisor to Puerto Rico's employees' retirement system and in 2008, lead the underwriting of a $2.9 billion bond issue for the government pension agency. UBS then placed $1.7 billion of those funds into UBS managed mutual funds that UBS then sold exclusively to customers in the island. This investment will have been forbidden by the Investment Company Act if these funds were sold in the States. The Puerto Ricans investors holding these bonds have suffered massive losses and are claiming that the UBS did not properly disclose the risk of these funds. On the island, hundreds of these customers have filed arbitration claims with the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, and they seek more than 1.1 billion in damages. UBS continues to lose these cases for failing its fiduciary responsibilities. Today's votes on H.R. 1366 will help end such outrageous investment abuse and give Congress another opportunity to align the laws governing Puerto Rico and the other territories with the laws governing the 50 states. H.R. 1366 will remove the territories exemption and make 1940 Investment Company Act apply to companies that are located, organized in, and sell to residents of all territories. I urge my colleagues to vote in support of H.R. 1366, the U.S. Territories Investors Protection Act. Thank you, and I yield back the remainder of my time. General Lady yields back.